If you're a carpet cleaner who wants to book more jobs, hit subscribe and stick around to watch the rest of this video. My name is Ruben Rock. I'm the president and head growth coach at bookcleaningjobs.com, and we help carpet cleaners book more jobs. One of the questions that I get all the time is, why do you work with carpet cleaners specifically? So I thought I'd take a minute and answer that question while I go for a little walk. It's a nice cloudy day in Seattle. It's not raining, it's not too cold, as close as we can get to a nice day in March. Let's get right into it. Again, my name is Ruben with bookcleaningjobs.com. I am the president and head growth coach here, which means that I help carpet cleaners book more jobs on a daily basis. I spend all my time helping carpet cleaners get set up with a website, with ads, with SEO, social media, all those basics to help them book more jobs. But a question that I get all the time is, why do I only work with carpet cleaners instead of, let's say, house cleaners, painters, electricians, roofers? So. I thought I'd just take a minute and tell you a little bit about my backstory because I get asked this question a lot and apparently some people don't know. I used to own a carpet cleaning business. About seven years ago, eight years ago, I bought a carpet cleaning franchise when my wife was pregnant with our son and I decided I wanted to go out and be a business owner. So I'd been working in marketing for several years. Uh, I worked in e-commerce marketing for a couple of really big companies, helping them sell their products online. And I was feeling really unfulfilled with my career, as you do when you're a corporate worker, right? And I decided I wanted to do something else. And I got interested in the idea of buying a franchise. Initially, I wasn't interested in carpet cleaning, but I was really interested in buying a franchise. Long story short, I ended up buying a carpet cleaning franchise, and I jumped into the world of carpet cleaning with absolutely no experience. I had never cleaned carpets before. I had never run any kind of carpet cleaning equipment, didn't know anything about chemicals, I didn't know how to get customers. I had never owned any kind of a service business. I had never, you know, literally never even had my own carpets cleaned. I don't think I even had carpet in my house at the point at which I bought this business. So I literally had no experience at all. And as I'm starting this carpet cleaning business, my wife is like eight months pregnant and I've just quit my six figure job to go and start this carpet cleaning business. The stakes were pretty high, right? I won't tell you all the backstory. Needless to say, we took a big risk because I wanted to try my hand at running a business and carpet cleaning was a way for me to do that. I knew a lot about marketing and I thought that that would help me get customers and grow a carpet cleaning business quicker. And it did, but it wasn't as easy as you might think, right? You might think professional marketer, somebody who does marketing all day long, starts a service business and then just markets the hell out of that service business and gets a bunch of customers at the end. Wasn't really that easy. When I first started out, I actually really struggled to book jobs and I tried everything under the sun to book jobs. Some of the stuff might sound familiar to you. I started running a Groupon. Groupon brought me some of my first customers, but they were not great customers. Let's just put it that way. They were okay customers. It got me in the door with people, but these were not people who were looking to buy additional services. I wasn't able to upsell things easily the way I thought I was going to, um, but it did get me some customers. I sold about a hundred Groupons and you know, this was 2015. So I don't know if it would work quite the same way these days, but back in 2015, I sold about a hundred Groupons and that's really how I got my first hundred customers. Now, I didn't make any money on those customers. After giving Groupon their hunk of flesh and after paying all my expenses on the business, there was really nothing left. So what ended up happening is I canceled the Groupon, I didn't run it anymore, and I tried out a program called Home Advisor. Home Advisor is now part of Angie's List. Angie's List bought them a few years ago, but I tried Home Advisor. I signed a 12 month contract with them, which was what they required. And uh, I think I spent a total of $4,500 with Home Advisor during the first 12 months that I was with them. When I did the math at the end of that 12 months, I had made a total of $4,500. When you subtract out my expenses on the business, that means I lost money. So Home Advisor did not work out for me either. I also tried a website called Thumbtack. Now Thumbtack has changed over the years, but back in the day, Thumbtack was a way for homeowners to put in a request, let's say they need their carpets cleaned, and carpet cleaners in the area could pay a couple dollars to send a bid to that homeowner. And I would send bids to homeowners all day, hoping that they would hire me to clean their carpets. And back then, Thumbtack was relatively unknown, and a lot of carpet cleaners were not really tapping it as a resource, and it worked pretty well. So I booked some jobs from that. In my first six months in business, that was really where most of my jobs came from. 
you know, I got some referrals from friends and family. I did some group bonds. I did some home advisor jobs and um, I did some thumbtack jobs. But most of those jobs, I was paying a lot of money to get the work. I was sometimes losing money on the job and it really wasn't a great way to build a business. I was finding out really quickly with my newborn baby at home who was getting to be, you know, six months old at this point, really finding out this was maybe not a long-term plan. This was not gonna work for me long-term. So I had to find another way. Now, luckily, this is the point at which some of my marketing background actually did start to kick in and help. Um, when I first started the business, I had thought ahead and I paid attention to my website. I made sure my website had actual photos of my business on it that I you know, customized the content on my website. I had a company build my website for me because it was a franchise. <clears throat> when you own a carpet cleaning franchise, sometimes they require you to have your website built by a specific company. But I actually worked with that company to update and customize the website to my liking, to change how the website worked. I actually put a form right on the homepage of the website, whereas the company who built the website buried the form on the contact page. So I said, no, stick the form on the homepage. I made a few important changes, right? And those changes over time started to add up. So in those first few months, my website started to show up on Google all of a sudden. I was starting to get closer and closer to page one when people were searching for carpet cleaner in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, which is where I was located. Sorry, I'm walking uphill right now, guys. Whew, gonna run out of breath. So as my website's starting to rank higher and higher, and I'm getting some customers, right? I'm getting them from Groupon, from HomeAdvisor, from Thumbtack. I'm getting those customers. I'm not really making a lot of money, but what I was doing is I was asking them to leave me Google reviews. And I didn't think anything of it at the time. It just seemed like second nature. Well, I better get some reviews on Google. Everyone else has reviews on Google. Well, I ended up getting about 50 reviews on Google in those first six months. In the course of getting 50 reviews on Google, working on my website consistently, working with customers and asking them to leave us reviews, adding new photos, all that activity added up. And suddenly it wasn't just my website that was showing up on the first page of Google. And at that point it was starting to show up on the first page. It was also my Google business profile. And suddenly I was on the first page of Google in two different places. So my phone was ringing more and more and I couldn't really figure out why because I had stopped spending so much money on thumbtack leads I had turned off my Groupon and I was just writing out my home advisor contract until it was over. I was trying not to spend any money with them, but my phone was starting to ring. And I did a little research and I figured out that it was because my website was starting to rank, my Google business profile was starting to rank, and the reviews were really helping. That's what I figured out, the reviews were really helping. So I decided to dig in a little more. I thought this Google thing's really working and I thought about my background in, in marketing and I was like, well, I know Google is important. I've run Google ads for a lot of other companies before. Let's run a Google ads campaign for my carpet cleaning business. So around the six month mark, I've been in business for six months, serving customers, really struggling to make a living. My wife and my baby back home, um, really relying on me to figure something out, make this business work because guess what? Around the six month mark, my wife got fired. She lost her job. So her corporate job that had been paying for uh, our house and our food and insurance and all that stuff, while I was starting up this business, we lost it suddenly. Um, so I had to do something. I started up a Google Ads campaign. And like I said, I'd run Google Ads before for other businesses. And I don't know why it hadn't occurred to me to do it for my carpet cleaning business. I guess I thought carpet cleaners must get jobs some other way, right? Through Angie's List or HomeAdvisor or something. But I started up this Google Ads campaign and my phone started ringing even more. And it was just because every time somebody in my area searched on Google for a carpet cleaner, there I was. They were either gonna see my ad or they were gonna see my Google business profile. It used to be called Google My Business back then. Or they were gonna see my website. At the same time, my Yelp page started to show up more often on Google because I was getting more reviews on Yelp from people who were using Yelp. My Thumbtack profile was showing up and I was near the top of the list of carpet cleaners in my area on Thumbtack because we were getting reviews there. My Facebook page started to show up. I mean, everything just started to come together. So I was getting so many phone calls that I actually decided I needed to hire somebody to help me out while I was cleaning so that I could be out in the van answering phone calls while he was inside cleaning for the customer. So that's what I did. I hired a guy uh, as my assistant carpet cleaning technician and he went into the houses, 
help me get started on the jobs. And then once we got started on the carpet cleaning jobs, I would duck out to the van, grab the phone, and answer the phone calls that were coming in and book us more jobs. Now, I did that for a couple of months before I realized, and by a couple of months, I mean like two, three, maybe, maybe four months before I realized I need more help. So I ended up hiring a second guy and having my first guy take the lead in the van. So now I had a lead technician and an assistant technician, and I was just answering the phones and booking jobs. And this started to go really well to the point that I basically canceled everything else. I canceled my home advisor after the first year because I wasn't making any money on it. I stopped bidding on thumbtack jobs because um, I wasn't getting as many responses from thumbtack jobs as I was getting from Google ads. I really basically just shut off everything except for my Google advertising. And I let my website, my SEO, my Google business profile, and my Google ads do their thing. And we booked a ton of jobs. I ended up having to hire more people and I ended up spending more on advertising. And all of this led me to putting more systems in place in my business so that I could hire more people, serve more customers, make sure that those customers were happy so we could keep getting more Google reviews, keep spending money on ads so that we could keep more customers coming in, so we could keep more Google reviews and keep the employees happy and paid. And it just became a cycle, right? Suddenly I had a business that felt like it had its own momentum. Suddenly I was able to be at home, answering the phone, booking carpet cleaning jobs while my crew was out doing the jobs for me. So all of that is to say, that's how I got into working with carpet cleaners. I had a firsthand experience starting and growing a carpet cleaning business from the ground up, from scratch, brand new area. Yes, it was a franchise. If you've never bought a franchise before, don't mistake it. It's not a business in a box. It's not turnkey. You don't just put your sign out front and suddenly you have customers. No, no, no. None of that happened. It was all incumbent upon me to figure out how to get customers. I started this business from the ground up. I had to figure all this stuff out for myself. Luckily, I had some marketing background to help me out, but I know a lot of other carpet cleaners are not in that position, right? So as I'm growing this business, I have more and more carpet cleaners asking me in the franchise, especially, hey, Ruben, how are you growing your business so quickly? How are you getting so many customers? What are you doing? And I started getting asked to speak at the regional seminars for my franchise and started sharing with everybody in the franchise how we were growing this business so quickly. And the word spread and people started saying, I need help. Can you just do this for me? This sounds great. I love the idea of running ads. I love the idea of improving my website and getting more reviews and making more money. But how do I actually do this? I'm not computer savvy, right? That's what I was hearing from all these carpet cleaners. After running my business for a couple of years, I started getting more and more carpet cleaners asking me to help out with their cleaning business. I started up a little side hustle of running Google ads campaigns for carpet cleaners, and that went really well. I ended up helping a ton of carpet cleaners with their Google ads, driving a ton of leads and phone calls and online bookings for cleaners for several years. And I really, really enjoyed that. Um, it was very satisfying to help cleaners grow their business while I was growing my business. And, you know, life happens as it does. Things change. My son got older. My wife got a new job. We moved to Seattle, Washington, which is where I live now. And we wanted to continue running the cleaning business. So what I ended up doing is I actually ended up letting my employees run the business while I managed it remotely from Seattle 2,000 miles away. So I ended up moving to Seattle with my wife a couple of years into this and managing my cleaning business remotely. My crew would show up every single morning, pick up the van, uh, grab the iPad, open up House Call Pro and go out and do a day full of jobs. At the end of the day, they'd come back, refill the van, refill all the supplies, wash everything that needed to be washed, deposit the money in the bank account, any cash that we got, and that was it. For almost two years, I ran the business that way where I was basically just answering the phone, booking the jobs, running the marketing and hiring so that we always had enough technicians out in the field to manage our demand. and we had a ton of demand. When I tell you that we were booked out two months at a time, pretty much every single summer, I am not kidding. Two months booked out to the point where I was trying to add another van, hire more crew members as quickly as I possibly could from Seattle, 2000 miles away from my carpet cleaning franchise in Wisconsin. And it was very difficult. After about 18 months or two years of managing the business remotely, we decided to move back to Wisconsin 
to get our employees and our systems really dialed in and to sell the business, which we did. So that's really where I developed a mission for Book Cleaning Jobs is from my experience owning a cleaning business. Now we put out free resources to help cleaners grow their business, like the Ultimate Carpet Cleaning Marketing Cheat Sheet, the social media swipe file for cleaners. Um, we also provide free consultations. So if you'd like to talk with somebody about your cleaning business, your goals, your marketing, go to bookcleaningjobs.com, grab one of our free resources, make sure you subscribe to this channel, and then book a time to talk with one of our specialists about your business. We'd love to hear about your cleaning business, your goals, what you've done in marketing so far, and what you're thinking about doing. And if there's anything we can do to help, obviously we'd love to help, but it's a free, no obligation call. Um, we're not gonna give you a hard sell or anything like that. So feel free to book a call, chat with us about your business. We'll tell you about our plans. If it's a fit for you, I'm happy to tell you more. If it's not a fit, we won't try to hard sell you. That's simple as I can make the offer. So that's it. I hope this was helpful. I appreciate your time. I'm Ruben with bookcleaningjobs.com. Talk to you later.